Hey everybody, I'm Zelda Master, and in this video I want to talk about something I doubt is actually going to happen, but would be fun to discuss nonetheless. And well, before I get into that, for those who don't know, within the next two weeks, E3 is upon us. This is my favorite time of the year. For those who don't know what E3 is, it's pretty much the biggest gaming convention within the year. It has so many things revealed from all video game companies. Pretty much all companies come together and announce their biggest games within E3. And to me, it's like Christmas. I never really celebrated Christmas, but if I were to have a Christmas, it would be E3 100%. So I'm so excited for anything they have to reveal. It doesn't have to necessarily be The Legend of Zelda. But in this video, I want to talk about a, you know, possibility we could get if we get a, a new Zelda game. Now, I highly doubt it. I feel like if Nintendo is going to reveal anything Zelda related during the C3, it will be Link's Awakening because they already showed off a little bit of that and we could use more gameplay of this upcoming remake. But personally, I would love a new Zelda game to come out and I highly doubt that. But it would be so awesome to get some sort of sequel to Breath of the Wild to get a new, you know, open world Zelda game on the Switch like how Breath of the Wild was. I may be speaking too soon. You know, people say that we should wait at least five years for the next big Zelda game. But, uh, you know, what if Nintendo did something like they did with Ocarina of Time to Majora's Mask. This is something I talk about a lot, and this is something I would love to see. So, personally, if there were any new Zelda game to come out, I would want it to be Breath of the Wild 2. Not necessarily a direct sequel, um, in terms of the title, but literally a direct sequel in terms of story. I want it to just follow after Breath of the Wild story. Kind of like how Ocarina of Time was to Majora's Mask in every sense. Not only was it a direct sequel from uh, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask that is, uh, but also it took Nintendo about a year or two to develop this game. And what they did is they reused all the assets from Ocarina of Time, made it into a different story, and just kind of put more depth on all of those assets from the characters to the items, to all of that, to even the races you find, like you get to learn so much more in Majora's Mask than you did in Ocarina of Time. And I feel like that's something we need in Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild opened us up to a huge world to explore, but didn't really go too in depth on the lore of these characters and how everything was established. We hear about the 10,000 years prior, but we have no idea what happened within between those 10,000 years or even the 100 years awaiting for Link. And I just feel like the story is very vague for what they set out. They set out a whole 10,000 years of lore, and we don't really get too much of it. So, uh, yeah, pretty much I want to get into this video on how I can imagine a Breath of the Wild tour, how I'd want Nintendo to kind of make something like this. Because even though I doubt we will get something like this during E3, if at any time Nintendo decides to announce some sort of direct sequel to Breath of the Wild, you know, its successor, which I feel like the game needs one, the game was so successful that it would be dumb for Nintendo not to make something that rides along the success of Breath of the Wild, then yeah, for me it would be just like a straight up sequel like how Majora's Mask was, reusing the assets. And the reason why I feel that is because Hyrule, while it was so big and beautiful in Breath of the Wild, it still was barren to a certain extent. Like, most of the map was the 900 Korok Seeds, and even that, there were some areas that you would go to and you'd feel like there'd be at least a Korok Seed, and there'd be nothing. Like, so much of the game was just kind of empty, and I feel like if Nintendo were to reuse the exact same map, but instead remove all the shrines, remove all the Korok Seeds, and put a little more depth in it, they can make something so much better, because the way Breath of the Wild's map is, is super fun to explore, but there's not that much to explore once you get one, all the 120 shrines within the game. Unless you're looking for the Korok Seeds, then yes, that adds more exploration to your game, but to me, it's just not enough, and I feel like the world isn't really put to its full potential. Like, keep it the same, you know, all the uh, provinces, all the areas, you know, the uh, places all intact, but the structures that were destroyed to rebuild them, to have like Hyrule, you know, two years after the calamity, uh, you know, Link saving everything, they finally are able to rebuild Hyrule, rebuild the castle itself, and kind of just continuing from that. And if that is the case, that would be really cool to see because they would want to pretty much, uh, you know, have new champions of Hyrule, and we already know who those champions will be as, uh, you know, the descendants of each champion who helped Link overcome each divine beast, those will be the upcoming champions. We even saw them use their abilities from Riju imitating Urbosa, from Yenabo imitating Daruk, or uh, even, um, you know, 
I guess not Mifa with Sidon, but Sidon would fit. Sidon's a warrior. Uh, you know, he's her brother. It only makes sense. And obviously, a good follow up for uh, Rivali would be Tiba. He helped Link get on Meadow. He's pretty much very talented, as is. So, yeah, we all felt like those characters were going to be the new upcoming champions, the one to replace the ones that died 100 years ago. Now that Hyrule is finally established, and I would love to see that. I thought we were going to get something like that in the Champions Ballad. Like, when the Champions Ballad was first coming out, before it actually did come out, when we were just getting DLC info, I imagined that it was going to be a ballad about the new champions, not the ones that died. But, it doesn't matter. If the game starts off with them, you know, crowning the new champions and, you know, it just kind of re-establishing Hyrule from there, that'd be so fun because finally we'd get a Zelda game in Hyrule that isn't necessarily about Ganon. And, uh, we've had a few Zelda games like that, but I would love for Breath of the Wild to kind of just continue straight after Ganon's defeat and see what other thing we can you know, establish from there. Any enemy could appear. It could be maybe even the Yiga clan expanding or something, because the Yiga was something that was barely established on. And uh, just overall, Breath of the Wild has so much interesting things that getting a direct sequel doesn't sound too far-fetched or crazy. Um, even you notice that Link keeps the Master Sword at the end of the credits in Breath of the Wild. And usually in every Zelda game, he usually puts it back in the pedestal. So I find that very interesting. Link has always been keeping the Master Sword. Even before Calamity Ganon was known to appear, Link had had the Master Sword. So it just means like maybe Link needs it for something else. Maybe there's something bigger Hyrule must overcome. There's other kingdoms. There's other things. Like we only know Hyrule and its kingdom. What if the world is beyond that? We've seen all of Hyrule. This is the first Zelda game where they're like, yes, you've seen the beginning of Hyrule to the very end of Hyrule. There is nothing else. And you get to see the ocean and the land beyond Hyrule. I want to go beyond Hyrule. That would be super interesting. Or even just have some sort of, you know, evil forest that came from beyond Hyrule, interrogate Hyrule, and take over. So that way we can just play on the current Hyrule map, but just have it slightly updated. Either or, I'm down for. But um, it would be cool also to see what they do with Zelda. Now that Zelda hasn't been trapped for 100 years, you see her tag along with Link, maybe she'll be the queen, kind of similar to how, you know, the Twilight Princess was in, uh, you know, Twilight Princess Zelda, she was more like a queen figure, she, um, you know, had to surrender herself to Xanth, there was just so much deep things, it'd kind of be cool to see Zelda put into those shoes, you know, finally have royalty after she had to overcome so much hardships to get her secret power, but, um, yeah, aside from that, I would love to see also the, uh, you know, Sheikah technology, you know, expanded on, because currently the Sheikah technology has advanced so much, and, you know, Link brought it back. They were unable to see all of it, it was just relics of the past, and then Link, with the Sheikah Slate being the hero, was able to return all the towers, and at the very end of his adventure, got a stinking motorcycle. I would love for the motorcycle to be a main vehicle of Link, like, within this next sequel. If we were to get one, this is all what if, but, um, in this hypothetical scenario, imagine starting off the game with your Master Cycle Zero being able to ride it anywhere, uh, and just kind of, you know, use it <laughs> at your leisure, because it's such a cool item to get, but you get it at the end of the game, you have to have completed pretty much everything to unlock such a thing. You know, at least all the Divine Beasts and do the Champion's Ballad, which for most people, that's what you'll do pretty light within the game so getting such a cool vehicle just seems kind of lame this late within the game i would love for it to be something you get much much earlier um and yeah outside of that there are some things i would want them to fix from breath of the wild that uh, i currently don't like that would be cool to see if there was in the sequel if we were to get one again i keep having to say if um, but it would be really cool to see certain things fixed, and one of the main things is uh, just make items not break. For those who may know me, I freaking hate that. Just change that up. It'd be cool uh, to have temples, to have dungeons, to just remove all 120 shrines and make it to where there are only like seven big dungeons with a bunch of mini shrines in them. That'd be way better, because that's how Zelda normally was. I'd rather go back to the older roots of temples. The other thing is, I'd rather get items from each temple, then random swords and weapons that break immediately. I don't want that anymore. I feel like that makes collecting within this game very worthless. Like, imagine if there's only one of each item, the one Royal Great Claymore, and there's no more of that item, 
and you had to like you know find you had to go through a lot to get it that'd be so much better than finding hundreds from enemies i know a lot of people like that mechanic but i feel like with how zelda is it doesn't really need it and you never really feel like it's a huge mechanic within the game oh i have to conserve my weapon once you get the master sword you're set you don't have to worry about any other weapon for the most part so that's a you know kind of concept i feel like they you know had something going for it but they didn't go all the way and that's why i feel like it fell flat if they want to keep items breaking at least have a way to reforge them or um you know something to not have them completely break on you be a have a way to save the item until you reach a blacksmith and fix it uh, another thing that would be really cool and actually give way more depth to Hyrule and I noticed that this kind of took away from breath of the wild was there shouldn't really be teleportation to every shrine now if they remove all the shrines there will be much more or less teleportation within Hyrule they could keep the Sheikah uh, towers I feel like the towers should stay the towers are such a cool concept um, and maybe Link has to re-update them uh, the start of the game, so you have to re-climb uh, every single tower. I think that'd be really fun. I freaking love the tower concept, but it would make way more sense if you could only teleport to towers. Towers, you know, give off a much stronger signal than maybe a shrine, and maybe only then Link is able to use his Sheik as, like, to reach that destination. I feel like being able to teleport to 120 different teleportation spots and, um all the towers just make it so much easier and it kind of removes that sense of exploration once you get all the shrines you no longer have to look for things towers make sense because you're able to glide down get a bunch of distance and you know kind of find your way around so if you only had towers i don't think that many people would complain and it would just give more to the game if you ask me um Another thing, maybe if rain and weather is going to stay, find uh, another way to kind of go around it. Maybe there shouldn't just be the Thunder Helm that has you avoid lightning strikes or just certain stuff like that. I know that sounds very nitpicky. It's Breath of the Wild. We should experience the wild and what it's worth. But uh, yeah, I, in my opinion, I feel like that was just something that could have been slightly improved on. Obviously, have Link swim underwater. I feel like that's a main necessity to make the game really in depth because there was so much water in the game that you couldn't explore underneath and i mean it makes sense nintendo already built so much within the air within the land everywhere that underwater would have just added so much more to the game but maybe now that hyrule is already established they don't have to put too much effort on the actual ground they can put some under the water i would love to at least check underneath lurlin village or something there's a lot of cool corals and stuff like that that would be cool just to check out in some way um and yeah if they were to remove the sheikah slate and have main items the sword combat for the most part is really good but i would love for nintendo to kind of improve on it maybe have parrying be not as uh, big of a reward i feel like parrying even guardians like people make it like such an issue i played sekiro for like a day and then i realized how easy breath of the wild was like parrying in a game like that you have to be so precise and you have to do it consistently because in breath of the wild you parry like an enemy with a weapon they drop the weapon it's over you parry a guardian it, the projection is so easy everything about it i know they made it slightly more difficult in master mode like the guardian could delay their laser i find that cool but no matter what it's still much easier to do and i feel like that threat the guardian had at first is completely gone even in the beginning of the game for me because i just know if i have even a pot then i'm deflecting every attack the guardian has to send at me so having something a bit more would be fun or just you know less of an advantage to attack your enemy i would like just more faster combat i'm not saying it has to be like sakira or you know how i used to mention before dark souls but with zelda being mainly about adventuring puzzles and sword play i feel like sword play is a huge part you know f combat is necessary within zelda now and it wasn't always a main thing but breath of the wild you really feel it especially with the certain challenges you have so i would like nintendo to just kind of go a little more in depth the flurry rush as well is a little too op just all the abilities are make the game so easy if you learn how to exploit it and i feel like yeah for casual players they'll never use it and the game will be difficult but for people who are willing to learn how to use it they will just exploit the crap out of it and the game is going to be ridiculously easy so i know that's a nitpick and maybe some people might not agree saying to make the game more difficult but personally i would love that and speaking about 
you know, Dark Souls in general. I mentioned this before, but online uh, would be an awesome thing. I actually made a video kind of dedicated to how I would want online to be. So you can check that video out. I'll link it in the description or at the end of the video. But I also want to mention just in general, like, I know the Nintendo Switch online program sucks, but to give players some sort of benefit for every game, even small things, upload, like I said, your um, time trials, like for mini games, or even your character build, or anything like that. It would just be really cool to see other players on their adventure, and it would make the game really uh, just so much more interesting because you always have new things to see, uh, even if it's something very, very small and not that necessary. Like literally just seeing someone else's build from their outfit and, and armor. That'd be cool to see like what your friend has. Actually, just seeing your friend's uh, character or something. I don't know. Anything small like that would be just fun. And that's just my opinion uh, because you know, it adds a competitive nature. And maybe there's like an item you don't know and it looks really cool and you want to figure out how to get it or something beyond those lines. But one other nitpick I have to say is maybe a more uh, upbeat soundtrack. <laughs> I would love for that as well, uh, just because Breath of the Wild soundtrack was meant to be Breath of the Wild, Links in the Wild, everything's quiet. But hopefully this next Zelda game isn't necessarily about the wild, or at least that's not the main focus. I would love for the old school, in your face soundtracks that just get you going. While Breath of the Wild does have some tracks like that, like Hyrule Castle and such, for the most part, there aren't many tracks like that. They're all mainly subtle, especially in the open world of Hyrule. You barely really listen to any sort of music. But, um... Yeah, in general, that's kind of the gist of the things I want to see within Breath of the Wild 2, if that exists. I highly doubt it will, but I thought it'd be fun to kind of talk about in general, um, because this has been something I feel like I always kind of brought up, whether it's in streams or videos, and I thought it'd be cool to make a video just kind of, you know, putting it all in one. All of the things I would love to see Nintendo add in a Breath of the Wild 2. Hopefully I'm right if we somehow get a game like this, or I might be completely wrong. I have no clue, but I would love to see something similar to this. Uh, let me know what you guys would want to see if we were to get a direct sequel to Breath of the Wild, and what you may think we're going to get during E3. I'll be real, even though I just spent this whole video talking about what I want to see, I doubt we're going to see any of this, at least in the C3. Maybe Nintendo might deliver in the future, maybe next year, I don't know, but this year I feel like if we were to get Zelda, it's just gonna be Link's Awakening. I'm not gonna complain if there's a demo that's playable, I'm gonna be playing it, because like I mentioned before, or if I didn't mention, I'm going to E3 this year, so uh, I, I've been going to E3 pretty much every year since I first started going, which was the year of Breath of the Wild, like uh, 2016, the year before Breath of the Wild came out, it was huge for Breath of the Wild, they revealed so much, they had a shrine, they had everything that just, you know, really gave you that Breath of the Wild feel and it was so fun. I also have a video talking about that and showcasing that, um, so hopefully with whatever Zelda related thing, or just in general Nintendo related thing we get, I'll be making a video in the upcoming two weeks about it. I'm overall super excited for all the gaming info we're going to be getting, not just from Nintendo, from every company. There's so many games I love playing and there's just so many things I'm looking forward to. Like I said, this is, this is my Christmas, so I can't wait. Let me know outside of Zelda what you're looking forward to as well because I'm interested in Overall, uh, if you're gonna go to E3, if you see me, please say hi. Uh, that'd be awesome to see some of you guys. But yeah, that pretty much does it. It's a, kind of a random rant. I actually want to talk about another upcoming Zelda thing I would like to see. Maybe I'll do that, you know, in this upcoming week before E3 as well. Even though I doubt they're gonna announce anything like what I want to talk about in E3. I kind of like these videos. So if you did enjoy this like kind of opinionated rant video please leave a like let me know what you think uh, I want to make more of these there's so many things I just love discussing and it'd be cool to just do more discussions with you guys whether it's me or a dark Luke but please suggest what kind of videos you'd want to see whether it's hating or just talking about something like this I have so much I just want to say and it's always fun to do so so I appreciate you guys listening anyways as always thank you all so much for watching be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed I've been Zelda Master and I'll see you all in the next one Bye!